Hello everyone, this is Wen Jie Chao. In the last video, I used some slides to cover the 3D model and marker sharing features. And in this video, I will use the app to show you where those features are. I will be quick. Instead of going through all the details, I will just point to you where the new features are. It won't take a lot of time. The first topic were the purchase and subscription feature to the new 3D model feature. So this is an app that has no installation. So I come in here, you click on the update to update the Pro version. And which, if you had to play the Pro app, you won't have this because the Pro feature was enabled automatically for you. The subscribe is new. You just click here. And here you can see some description of what the 3D model feature is. And you can see the price here is $599. You just click on the purchase. So that's where the interest is. I will not show the actual purchase step, but you just follow the instruction there that provided by Google Play Store. The next topic is to find nearby existing marker. After you subscribe to the 3D model feature, you can zoom in on the map to see it. Let's zoom in to the New York City. The first time it'll take some time to download because the uh, quite a number of markers in the New York City. All the rectangular markers are from the server. In comparison, if you have any marker like this, the circle one, those are markers are from yourself. If you want to see a list of all the markers from the server, just click here. There's browser nearby, no marker, where you can see all the markers. It will show within 50 kilometers from the map center. So which means if you want to see another area, just move the map to another area first, then click the same button. I mentioned in the last video about the plan design change. I will just show you where the access to those functions. Uh, if you click on the menu, you can see there's no more save button in the share button right now. And the save button is actually moved to plus button. There's a save button right here. The step is, let's say you finish the marker of this one, you just click here, there's a new plan. Just click one, click a new one and let's say, okay, now it's a new plan. We uh, go by the number. So we will basically name as plan one, plan two, and here all the way increase up. So if you need any old plan one, plan two, the more we'll reuse those slots. Let's say you place uh, your camera here, your scene location there, Let's say you're done with this plan. You just click here to give it a name. You might just say whatever, whatever name you want and just rename it. In the older version, you can continue working on the plan, but in the new version, make sure you do a restart right here, start a new one. So now you got to plan eight again because plan eight was rename it and you use reuse the same name again. And if you come back here, you can see you have this whatever plan uh, let's get rid of this further thing. So you can have this whatever plan now. And you also have plan 8. That's the one you want to work on temporarily until you find another one. Another way to do that is let's say I open this whatever plan. I change my location to somewhere else. Another quick way to do that is you click plus button, you click this save. Now it tells you that this one is saved or you want to continue or you want to start a new plan. You can just create a new plan and done. Now it's new plan is created. So there are many places that you can start a new plan or renaming plan, but the only thing you need to make sure is you don't mess up with the existing plan by modifying it. That's the only thing. Add a local marker and the new marker list page. Add a local marker is the same as before. So let's look at the number here. Uh, here I have 14,535 markers. And if I come in here, I just add a marker in any location and come back to see it again. See, it has one more marker, become 14,536, got one more. Which means whenever I add a new marker, it shows up immediately and saved it to the database. And if I delete this one, I notice I have a warning now. Let me see you again. Let me show you again. When you click delete, I will have a delay of two seconds so that you have time to think. Do you really want to delete? Again, the reason is 
if you delete the marker, the marker is really gone. It will not be any saved plans as before. It's really gone. That's why I have two second delay to give you time to think about it. And if you're coming back to see it, now it become 14,535 again. So marker, adding a deletion, everything happened immediately. And the new marker list page is right here. If you click on the markers, you can see this marker list. Let me show, I mean, clear everything first. So total ones, total 14,535 markers all show up in this list. And sometimes this screen is too big, you can just click this button to hide it. That still works. And then you can still use this text to search. Okay, so that's a new marker list. You will like this new marker list. It's much useful than before. Move marker, draw polyline on polygon. Let's say I want to have a draw a line around the governor's island. So I can just non-press to add a marker. We even have a track that you can have the polygon thing here. Marker. You can choose any category for the marker and still can draw the polygon or the polyline. First, I'll show you how to move the marker. You press and hold on the edit marker button right here until this shows up. Uh, you can still zoom out the map, doesn't matter. You can move the map around. Now, if you drag the trackball, you can see it's being dragged around because no view is but your finger is on the bottom where the marker is on, on top. Much better than non press here, then you move the marker because your finger is blocking. And that's what I say. I want to draw a line around this island. You can just tap on the button on the left. Now you see a green circle, which you can sync it as a cursor where the, where the cursor is on the map. And then you can click on the plus button to add a point. This actually add a point right here. Then you can do the line like that. Like that. So anytime if you want to adjust the one of the existing point, just click on that. You can move around. You can click here and move it. So it's very easy. Or you can use this one, uh, left the right button to go to the previous one or go to the next point. You can also tap this button to go to the rectangle, to go to the polygon tools. And the same thing, you can just drag it around like that. And anytime if you're done with the drawing, just click here, it will be gone. And if you click here again, you will see it. We don't show the track or the polygon all the time uh, because we think it might be not efficient enough. So every time you, if you want to see it, you have, if you have to select the marker to see the corresponding polyline or the polygon. That's a move marker, draw polyline and polygon feature. The next one is to import a model and adjust its position and rotation. Uh, to do that, I will just use this as an example here. Uh, go to the editor, I clear the model first. The import model is from here. You tap here. From here, I have uh, some bunch of model files I imported before. Let's say uh, maybe just Roger Center. I will not explain this option here, but I have separate video to talk about it. So I'm just showing you how to quickly adjust position here. Uh, maybe change the building, I say OK. Now I will see a model. Uh, again, you press and hold on this edit marker button. If it's too big, you just zoom out a little bit. You can move it around so you can see the, the shape move with me. It will be some delay if the model is complicated. Let's see how many faces. Yeah, this one has 2,000 faces, which is I consider it as the opposite of the complexity. Uh, that's why if you move it around, you will see some delay, but generally it's good enough. You can also rotate the marker because sometimes the model is not aligned with the map correctly, so you can uh, rotate it. So that is aligned. So these two features to fine tune where the marker location is and then also fine tune the rotation is very, very useful when you import a model. To publish marker is again and the editor marker screen and on the top you have this share button and here we have to publish this marker. And here are them checklist. Just read through them and the only thing is have a red cross is and you should use absolute elevation for building markers. And the reason is the elevation of this location based on the Google elevation is 3.36. 
and if you click here, we automatically fill the value from this elevation to here. But if you're not using Google Elevation Provider, if you use Bing or some planner elevation provider, we will not automatically fill. In that case, you need to use Google Earth to find the location and find the elevation of that location. The reason is we want to use absolute elevation so that uh, no matter what elevation server that the end user the user is using, they always get the correct result by using the absolute elevation. So as of someone who published a marker, I want you to make sure the bottom of the building animation is correct. So that's why we want to enforce this uh, absolute elevation thing. So if you come here and publish this marker again, see everything is green. And you can click here, say upload, which will upload to the server and it will notify admin to approve the marker. So that's the publish marker thing. The next one is how to submit marker feedbacks. To do so, you just select any existing published markers. Let's say, for example, for this one. Then you can click on this info button. And from here, you can see this marker was published by myself. And you can submit the feedback from right here. And you need to log in first. Let me just log in here. I use my personal account to log in. So I send me the feedback and here you can specify what kind of error it is. And the reason the marker could be wrong is because the model could be wrong, sometimes the height is wrong, sometimes the location is wrong. And from here you can check whatever that makes sense. Then you can enter all the text details here to tell the admin what's wrong about this marker and how to correct them. The reason I have to talk about the data safety is because uh, now we use a database and not the file anymore. You probably see the benefits of database because you can query database much faster than the old file. But you may wonder, Wenjie, why don't you use database at the beginning? Do you know there's something called database? Um, sure, of course. I'm a computer science major. Of course, I know there is a database. And I choose files over database. The reason is exactly data safety. By using file, I basically split the whole piece into small files. If one file is corrupted, all other plan files or marker files are still there. And if the database file for some reason is got corrupted, the whole database is gone. There's no way you can cover it back. So from my point of view, using file is safer than use database. But right now, I have no choice in order to implement this model feature. I have to use database. That's why I also add some extra features to make sure data is safe. So let's take a look. So first of all, sometimes you have to uninstall and restore the app because something is broken and you have to do that. Here, I will do an uninstall to show you. And here you can see there's a checkbox. Do you want to delete the 51.67 megabytes of app data? Make sure uncheck this one. If you don't uncheck it, all the plan, all your markers will be gone, okay? That's very important. You make sure you uncheck it. Then you click uninstall. Then next time you install the app, the data still be there. That's number one. The second thing, you never click on the clear the data button in the system setting for this app. Where is the setting I talk about? Go to the setting, uh, go to apps, then click on the top apps where you can find the plant as one of the apps. Let's just use plan as an example here. Then you click on the storage. And here is the clear data button. Make sure you don't clear. Otherwise, all your plan marker are gone. Uh, Sometimes you use third-party app, which will clear the storage every night automatically. In that case, make sure you add plan to the safe list of that app. They usually provide a kind of white list kind of thing, which they don't do the cleaning. Uh, make sure you add plan to that. Okay, that's the second thing. The third thing, make sure you back up the data. As I said, the database now has just one file. If the database is gone, then all your data is gone. So there's no way to cover it back. And now it is a bigger problem because you can't even see the data file uh, in with the new version. In order to get data out, I input a new feature under settings and general, and here you can see there is a click to backup data, and you click to restore the data. You just click on the backup. 
Now it tells you where the backup is done. So go to storage, Android data, you know, that uh, is gone. Let me do it again. So files backup here. And let me show you where, the, where it is. Go to Android, data, and find uh, plain app. It will be a huge in this. Sometimes it's very hard to find. Do you see it? I didn't even see it oh, right here. Uh, here, then files, then backups. You see, I just clicked twice, so you see two backup files. So each backup file contains the database file we are talking about. And make sure you have some either automated program to copy this photo to somewhere safe. This photo is still considered as part of the app. If you uninstall the app, this photo will be gone as well. So make sure you copy this photo to somewhere outside, okay? And you either have a phone factory set it or you have to uninstall the app completely or you got a new phone. You can copy this photo back into the same photo here. Then you click on this restore. It will show you what available backups are. You just click here and then do a restart because restart will erase everything from your existing database and clear new one. So you just restart. And now this one has, has a new database there. So that's the step how to backup and restore. So that's the end of this video. Thank you for watching.